So, dear guests, the, the, the members and friends of the, the BAFA, welcome very much to the meeting, the editor session today. Um, and Jason and I are going to give a bit of information about the recent development and future plan of the journal. We understand that we are standing between you and lunch, so we're going to make it as brief as possible, but also leave some time for discussion and questions. Uh, the comments on questions are very much welcome uh, by the end of the session. So to begin, uh, we'd like to uh, congratulate on the great start of the uh, 2020 BAFA conference. Uh, this uh, is, uh, the, I, I believe, the, the first major conference took place on site uh, since the start of the pandemic. It's a, a, it's a very, very much great event of three days with as many as 317 delegates, uh, uh, with uh, six, key, six key events and as many as uh, more than 200 papers. Uh, so uh, I understand many of the delegates are uh, attended online, just like uh, Jason and myself, and many have made your effort to attend the, uh, the, the, the event in person. We, we would like to take the chance to uh, thank you for the active participation and also thank the the, the uh, great uh, service and uh, contribution of the organizers and also the president of BAFA. So here's the outline of our talk in, in this session. We're going to give some brief uh, information about statistics of the journal, some new visions and strategies, as well as some common reasons for rejection or desk rejection. Uh, in the end, we're going to highlight a number of uh, star papers uh, this is uh, uh, the, the pretty much what we're going to cover today. So for those of you who are new to the conference or new to the BAFA, especially the uh, PhD students, well, the, the, BAF, uh, the, the journal BAR is the official journal of BAFA. And BAFA has a long history and established since 1947. It is a leading learning society in accounting finance in the UK with more than a thousand members and a growing international influence and impact. So talking about the Journal of uh, British Accounting Review, it publishes original scholarly paper across a whole spectrum of accounting finance. Well, we have uh, accounting in the name, but if you are a student in finance, please also do consider to submit your work to our journal. And the journal is eclectic and pluralistic. That means we accept a wide range of research methodologies and topics. Uh, evidence from the UK and non-UK sources are equally acceptable. And we particularly encourage studies using international sample. So since the beginning of May last year, uh, Jason from the uh, University of Macau and myself from Uni of Edinburgh, we took over the post as uh, the joint editors of the, of the journal. And we thank the, uh, uh, the Nathan and Alan for the nine-year outstanding service uh, to the journal and making the journal one of the, uh, the best in the area of accounting finance. So next, we're going to share you some important statistics of the journal. Well, uh, by, by emphasizing the, the rankings, we are now seeing this, uh, the, the metrics is uh, the only thing we actually gonna pursue after, but actually we, none of the measures are perfect, but I believe, uh, we believe those metrics gonna provide some important information to us, although it's not, not a, the, the, the only important information. So according to the most recent measure on the, uh, on the, from the Web of Science uh, about the impact factor of the journal, which is uh, basically marrying the citations, we are the top two in accounting, only after the Journal of uh, Accounting and Economics, and top seven with accounting and finance combined. If we talk about the Scopus, uh, uh, they, they also give a site score, which is alternative measure of the citations. We are top three in accounting in the world after Journal of Accounting and Economics and Journal of Accounting Research. Uh, we are uh, also top seven with accounting and finance combined. So basically according to, to those measures, we are truly an international uh, uh, leading uh, journals in accounting finance. And according to the ABDC journal ranking, we also rate it as A+. So next immediate uh, uh, goal for Jason and I is to make uh, to reduce the disparity in the rankings 
and also further improve our ranking certain, uh, uh, in certain countries, such as in the ABS, we are a three star. We're going to make effort to further improve it and make the journal to be a, uh, well, a journal serving, uh, serving the society of BAFA, but meanwhile, a globally recognized leading journal in, this, uh, in those uh, research uh, areas. Well, the 2021 size score has not been published yet, but according to the monthly score uh, of, the, of April, as you may find out, we, our size score has increased from three, uh, sorry, from seven to 7.3. That means our ranking this year gonna be, uh, there are gonna be ch chance for us to further increase. Uh, we may climb from top seven in the world to top uh, six. Uh, in the area of accounting finance. So we thank excellent, we use the chance to thank the excellent service and contribution of the former editors, the editorial board members, the referees and authors of the journal. And, and, uh, and more importantly, we also thank the members and friends of the BAFA. We, we will very much welcome your uh, submission as well as your uh, input in various ways. This is a statistics of submission. Since uh, Jason and I uh, took over the post last year, the number of submissions has further increased for about 100 a year, and we received uh, 594 uh, in uh, 2021. Um, well, the, the, uh, this is a breakdown of the uh, origin of the uh, corresponding author, origin of countries of the corresponding author. The UK remains the dominant uh, sources of submission followed by Australia. The numbers of submission from China nearly doubled last year uh, uh, and followed by the uh, New Zealand, uh, United States and continental Europe. Well, as, we, as you may notice, uh, uh, scholars in the UK and many European countries publish, I mean, they produce very high quality research and there is a room for us to improve in terms of uh, our uh, uh, visibility and attractiveness to attract high quality papers from those underrepresented, uh, underrepresented countries. So to achieve the goal, which is make the journal to be a globally leading journal, we, we, ha we have come up with a number of initiatives. Uh, we'd like to share those uh, initiatives, uh, initiatives with you. The first is we're gonna further improve the author experience. We are possibly the only uh, one of the leading journal which does not charge a, f uh, a submission fee. This is very important for scholars from developing countries where the research uh, uh, funding is not abundant. Uh, so the, the, the free of uh, submission fee strategy uh, will not, I mean, void submissions uh, for, for those uh, uh, very potential scholars in, in, in developing countries to submit the work to our journal. Meanwhile, we uh, urge the uh, associate editor to take a more active role. They also review the, uh, the papers before they send paper out for blind review. And uh, in this way, they actually provide timely and constructive report to authors. As you may find out, a growing number of papers are death rejected either by the joint editor or associate editors. This helps them to uh, target a more suitable publication outlet and meanwhile sir, I mean, save the uh, referee's time and resources and also reduce the turnaround time of the journals. And secondly, we try to enhance the diversity of editorial members of, of the accounting and finance uh, sections of the journal. This including the diversity of the, ge of the uh, geographic distribution, the gender, and also uh, like the age or, or, or stage of the career of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, newly appointed uh, editorial members and AEs. Uh, so we'll, in order to uh, uh, enhance the leadership of the journal, Jith and I, have appointed, have appointed six new consulting editors from different parts of the world, like the States, Australia, and, and the UK. They are leading scholars in their research areas and has rich experience in leading journals. They have actively helped us to screen some uh, special issue some proposals and give important ideas on, uh, 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 on a number of uh, uh, submissions in the past since they were uh, appointed. And also we have added a number of new uh, associate editors. Let's uh, include uh, editors in the, from the UK, from Europe, and from the Far East, 
like uh, 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 Liang Hao is a leading scholar in, uh, in a CSR uh, and he's from uh, Singapore. We, we appoint him this year, last year, as one of the new associate editors. We believe with their effort, we will further increase in our, our impact of the journal in those uh, uh, areas. And thirdly, we uh, have started a, a, a new submission type, which is a research note. As you may notice, some other leading journals, such as uh, Strate Strategic Journal of Management um, and the British Journal of Management, as well as even the uh, American Economic Review have a new journal called AER Insight to publish a uh, uh, research note. Well, the bar uh, from last year, we now uh, started to considering uh, submissions of uh, research note. And uh, we, we believe this uh, research note can provide timely analysis of uh, emerging and important issues, which offers unique insight for quick dissemination. But those research notes are uh, only considered if comprehensive setting of the day, uh, setting do not exist for more thorough analysis. And those research notes need to be no more than 3,000 words, and the empirical analysis should be properly motivated by theories. So we give some examples of the topics people can consider to write, such as a non fungible token, which is uh, uh, the, the emerging area in fintech, the carbon neutrality, as well as some uh, methodological advances in certain research areas. So in addition to the research note, the, the bar always publish a small number of research survey article, as well as uh, we, co we occasionally publish some uh, book reviews as well. So please do consider our journal if you have uh, uh, research output in those, in those formats. And fourthly, Jason and I has uh, formalized the uh, special issue submission uh, procedure. So it used to be on ad hoc basis, reviewed on ad hoc basis, but now we have formalized the procedure and published the procedure in SSRN and invite submissions of the of the uh, special issue or endorsed conferences from leading scholars of the world. As you may find out, the journal has published a number of special issues, quite, quite, a, quite a few special issues in the, in the past, and many of which have attracted very high impact score uh, for the journal. So uh, since we published that uh, procedure, we have received a large number of submissions with the, with the help of the consulting editors we have uh, to carefully choose a small number of conferences to, to endorse. And also we have uh, 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 published a number of call for papers on special issues. So such as uh, when the uh, COP26 uh, took place last year in Glasgow, we worked with uh, uh, Adam Smith's Business School to have an event, which is not special issue, only endorsed the conference uh, on, on the climate finance issues. We have worked with other uh, climate financial issues with the Uni at Edinburgh and the University College of London. And uh, by endorsing these conferences, the conference uh, presenters are encouraged to submit their paper to the, to the uh, journal on the regular review process, so no special issue is uh, involved. And meanwhile, we also support uh, uh, scholars uh, from developing countries, in particular, since last year, we have worked with, uh, yeah, uh, no, since this year, actually, we have promulgated a new research excellent award for women uh, in the leading uh, county finance association uh, in Africa, which is known as AAFA. So the conference this year is going to take place in Egypt, and we have this uh, we award to encourage female researchers in those uh, African countries. In addition to this, we, the journal has worked with uh, the BAFA regional group and the themed group on a number of events. And here we'd like to give you a quick look of a number of special issue sections or uh, conferences which are going to take place later this year or next year. So those uh, special issues are on emerging topics like carbon finance, carbon accounting, political instit institution and accounting finance. Uh, st st uh, sustainability reporting, as well as public uh, finance accounting uh, of the post-pandemic world. And, and lastly, the, the, another one next year on AI application of AI and big data in accounting uh, finance research. So if you have suitable papers, we encourage you to submit those papers to those uh, uh, special issue conferences, special section conferences led by uh, guest editors from different parts of the world. 
Um, so if you're interested in submitting a, a proposal to of uh, 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 endorsed conferences or a special issue or section, well, you will need to uh, write a proposal which outline uh, 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 the rationale uh, to choose this cutting cutting edge and relevant topics. And you will expect it to have very strong international guest editor team. And also you will expect it to write a three page index and critical literature review uh, literature uh, survey to articulate why this paper, why this area needs further develop, development. And we provide a link to which lead you to the uh, special issue uh, proposal requirement. We very much look forward to uh, further collaboration with uh, with the BAFA uh, members and friends. So after summarizing those four initiatives, I also would like to uh, summarize uh, some key uh, reasons for desk rejection or rejection because we believe this is going to uh, help the scholars, especially uh, a PhD student or, uh, or new scholars to reflect on their work, try to address those problems before uh, submitting the paper uh, to the journal. So the British Accounting Review published papers which, address, uh, which addresses important and real problems or puzzles. That means well, we have three important criteria. The first one is the question is people do, don't know, not yet know the answer. And also it's not very much obvious because if there has been a neighboring paper referring to, uh, which gave a uh, the answer already and you are using an alternative measure on some existing variables to produce another paper, well, the, the, the contribution might be uh, marginal in that case. And secondly, we want to uh, publish papers which address the question that people want to know the answer. Well, the, uh, not, uh, some questions are not, not has been answered, but not necessarily they are important. We want to study the, 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 the uh, papers which provide relevant knowledge uh, uh, to, to, the, to the question people like to know the answer. And thirdly, we want to publish paper which matters for people and society, which can help the, your paper to have a built up impact. So here are some common issues for the rejection. So a literature gap does not naturally guarantee its contribution because as I mentioned earlier, there might be a neighboring paper, a neighboring paper which uh, uh, provide the knowledge already and undermines the country, original contribution of, of, of your work. The second one is uh, a common problem is a ra random concept uh, connector. There are a lot of concepts in finance or accounting. By connecting them by using a regression model does not naturally build up the contribution because the connection might be uh, contrived or, or the, the, maybe the question is completely on nature and maybe the mechanism is a bit far-fetched. And thirdly, uh, of course, we encourage uh, studies uh, work on samples, both in the UK and other countries. But meanwhile, we also need to, to, to bear in mind when we look into a new country, uh, we, 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 try, we need to avoid the problem of narrow marginalists because uh, without uh, fully explore the institutional insights of those countries, just applying the existing knowledge, ex existing model to a new setting may not generate a, a, a broad interest for the, for the typical readers of the journal. And next is the lack of theoretical contribution. Sometimes we have a quote, very cool data to analyze or we have a, a quasi-nature experiment which we believe can help us to solve some problem. But we still bear in mind, well, the setting is not everything. We need to fully engage with the literature, have a very clear online theory, theoretical framework for our research question. And thirdly is methodological rigor. Uh, because uh, with the, 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 the literature has developed I mean, rapidly and the bar for the uh, methodological uh, expectation has increased as well. So we need to fully uh, uh, bear in mind a number of issues like endogeneity issues need additional effort nowadays uh, before we can uh, uh, make our story convincing to the readers. And, and thirdly, uh, I, it's uh, actually a uh, uh, a suggestion for uh, PhD students or young researchers, which is uh, we, uh, you must have a, a lot of research ideas in mind. But nowadays, I think pursuing the most promising question is, about, is a, and for the best in, of interest for your career, because there's always a, a, a sunk or opportunity cost. Uh, 
one day you spend on a bigger project uh, or smaller project, it gonna means uh, one day you spend on a smaller project means uh, that one less day you're gonna spend on a more promising project. So the 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 uh, is uh, the, the the game of the, uh, 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 the the rule of the game has changed. It's not like no longer it's like counting the number of publications, but to publish important studies that people like to read and people can learn learn new things from it. And next, uh, we'd like to share you with you a number of star papers in the past year. But, but please, uh, the, I'd like to emphasize that this is not the, the BAFA Best Paper Award because uh, BAFA Best Paper Award is selected by associate editors, which are going to be announced in the plenary session after lunch. But here are the star papers which are uh, given by the publisher according to their citations and impact. Uh, I, I, I can address that a bit later. So the, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce the most cited articles uh, published all time, uh, but according to the citation of last year. As you may find out, the, the papers on gender, environmental, and fintech are quite hot. Here are the leading papers uh, in, this, uh, in this category. Uh, the first one is about gender diversity, and second one is about environmental issues. And authors have been informed about this, uh, about, about this uh, achievement. And the next one is a measurement uh, according to the uh, publication in the past three years, but the citation of the last year. Uh, here are the two papers. Here are the two. Sorry. Here are the two papers of the. Of them, the first one is uh, uh, internet-related technology, and the next one is uh, about Bitcoin. And Elsevier also provide us uh, uh, information about the papers which attracted highest social media attention, and those papers are on. Um, financial innovation, and also another one is on Islamic finance, I believe, or Islamic finance and gender diversity. And those are the papers which attract very high media, media uh, citations. So if you have a paper published in uh, the British Accounting Review, uh, Jason, I also encourage you to post uh, like abstract or highlights of your paper in social media like in LinkedIn or, or Twitter, which can help you to be considered for this award and also increase the impact of your paper. Uh, uh, uh. Well, lastly, uh, we'd like to highlight the number of principles that we of, uh, of, the, of the Journal for Future Development. So we're going to continue to adapt the, the cardin uh, cardinal principles of high quality, relevance, and originality. So the, to continue to reflect the interest of the membership of the BAFA and to continue to provide the best possible experience to the authors and to maintain or improve our leading position in terms of uh, site size score and impact factor. And we will thrive for more balanced development with uh, enhanced global impact and to maintain British accounting finance research tradition, but meanwhile make the bar more international. And we will uh, uh, aim to provide more support for researchers in developing countries, emerging economies, and support junior scholars. And also we will continue to contribute to the sustainability of accounting finance discipline and to make the bar more relevant and responsive to the demand of the economy and society by leading, fostering, encouraging research in areas with pressing issues with significant challenge, such as uh, sustainability issues, uh, development issue, inequality issue, and also recent pandemic. We also encourage research, researchers using the new setting or new, newly available methodology uh, to, apply those mes uh, to apply those research uh, uh, tours in our understanding of accounting finance, such as AI, big data, and text analysis. Well, so this is uh, 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 the pretty, mu pretty much the summary of the, of the development of the journal of the last year. And uh, Jason and I would like to highlight that uh, the, the journal is aimed to advance the knowledge of accounting finance uh, uh, and as one of the leading journals. And we will aim to uh, provide the best experience for authors. And we encourage your submission as a member and friends of the BAFA. And this is a journal of the, this is the link of the journal if you have, haven't submitted anything to us. 
and also uh, we open a LinkedIn account for the journal. And many of our posts attracted around uh, 10,000 reads. So if you haven't followed the LinkedIn page of us, we will very much welcome you to uh, follow us uh, in LinkedIn. Uh, and, and lastly, I, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you again for your uh, support and uh, contribution uh, to, to BAFA and, and as well as uh, to, to the British Counting Review. Now, uh, let me stop sharing the screen. I think Jason and I will be more than willing to answer uh, the questions uh, 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 or inquiries from the audience. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm not sure we can hear the, unless you have a mic, right? Jason, how are we going to hear the, uh, uh, the questions? Stuart, yeah, I've just got the roving mic. Thank you so much. Yeah, Stuart, please. Yep, we can. Thank you for the presentation. So uh, I'm a PhD student, so I, I just have one quick question. Maybe it's quite naive, but I just wonder, because I saw the examples you have presented of the star papers, they're all written by the several authors, I think at least two authors. So I'm just wondering if that is uh, possible for one independent um, PhD student to publish the star Paper. Are there any examples? Uh, th uh, thank you so much. Jason, would I answer this one or you, you want to answer it? Um, well, of course, we would we, 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 uh, we, uh, we, uh, um, welcome any paper submitted by one single author. But to be honest, uh, the trend seems to be like the, 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 there's a uh, uh, this collaboration between two or more authors, researchers. And we seldom, we rarely see uh, single author papers these days. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, that doesn't mean you have to find a co author, right? It's tough to, <laughs> to, to, to read uh, co author papers. Yeah. If, uh, if you, you or anyone can single handedly. Uh, finish a paper, submit it, um, it's marvelous. Yeah, and also the star papers are according to the citations uh, published by publishers, so it's not like we pick the, a few people's uh, paper, name and th them as a star paper, it's actually based on the citations. Uh, so uh, for, for, for uh, junior researcher and PhD student, I, I, we very much encourage you to submit your, uh, one of your chapters to the journal, partially because the uh, reputation of the of the of the of the bar and also the cl close link of the of the of the journal to the uh, academic society of the of our UK accounting finance uh, academia uh, and, and, and uh, for, for, for my personal experience uh, after I graduated from my PhD I think one of the first paper that I I wrote outside my PhD papers were uh, thesis were published in bar I very much appreciate that experience when I, I mean, for a number of rounds of review, I learned a lot from this. So, uh, so yeah, to summarize, uh, we, we very much encourage uh, PhD students to submit the work to us. I think, just if I can jump in now, because we've got another couple of questions from the floor, but I also noticed as well, I think Pauline Wheatman's online and she's got a question. So Pauline, if you want to open up your microphone, yeah, hi, thanks, thanks, Stuart. I want to ask a provocative question, and I know you can both I know you can both cope with it. You put up statistics that showed quite high number of submissions, something in the 400s, 500s, but only publishing 40 papers. Now that tells me some stories. It tells me possibly only bad researchers come to you, which I don't believe is right, but that's one interpretation. Another one is that the publishers are preventing you from publishing more than 40, and I would regard that as serious. And you're spending most of your time on rejections. 
So how are you thinking about how you can get more evidence of good research? Because those figures say to me, nearly all the researchers who come to you must be really bad. And I don't believe that. So I say it's provocative on purpose, because I want to know how you're thinking about those statistics with only 40 papers. Thanks, Stuart. Jason, you may start. Uh, my, I haven't thought of this uh, carefully, and my immediate reaction is that thank you for the question at the first. Uh, it's a very uh, important question. Actually, we have uh, uh, um, actually we discussed this actually at the meeting before, uh, although uh, in a different way. But uh, uh, but that certainly it's lost that the only the uh, the established people uh, the. To, 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 Publish those papers like 40 or so every year, uh, about the same number probably uh, every year. Um, we have uh, actually the the the, the, the authors uh, mixed uh, junior, senior, younger ones, uh, senior ones. Um, there's no prejudice to younger junior academics. Um, uh, actually, the, 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 the journal has has attracted probably. Um, Submissions from all over the world, uh, as you can see, but, but uh, uh, mainly concentrates in a few countries, uh, from the UK, from Australia, um, and recently from China, New Zealand, and several other countries. Um, um, yeah, we, we, we don't know uh, whether we we have discussed whether we want to increase the um, issues from six at the moment. I think we start from 2017. We uh, we uh, we published six issues before we only have we had like uh, four issues. Uh, maybe we, we we need to consider whether we increase this to like to to more issues that will accommodate more papers. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, also the uh, rejection rate we know is a bit low. Uh, we understand that, uh, but the the, the rate is actually in line with other leading journals they have a roughly similar rejection rate uh, but we fully uh, get, get your uh, the point which is uh, we may talk to the publisher to see whether they would like to give us more volumes to publish a year uh, so to have more papers uh, 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 published thank you so much for the question Pauline the increase the increase in terms of number of submissions is uh, in line with the like the rank of the journal in a sense uh, if when the journal rank goes up and then there's, there is more submission, for example, when uh, bar, the, the journal was uh, ranked as uh, a star journal in APTC ranking in Australia, then the submission from Australia and New Zealand increased sharply, um, and it's still increasing. Um, so I think uh, this, uh, uh, this of course, uh, gives us uh, more choices of uh, selecting higher quality submissions, but as, as you said rightly, um, we do have to like spend more time on um, screening the papers and, and also then selecting the papers, rejecting the papers, uh, because we, when we publish so, uh, so many papers per year. Yeah. Okay, great. We'll take another question here from the floor. Yes, please. Um, I'm a PhD student, and um, first of all, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I have a question, please, regarding the most common reasons for rejections. You mentioned that one of the most common reasons for rejection is the lack of um, theoretical framework. Uh, but I have seen a lot of papers in British Accounting Review. Um, some of them really make a separate section as a theoretical framework. Some of them don't make a separate section for a theoretical framework, and they briefly mention the theories within the hypothesis. And some of them didn't even mention the word the, hypoth uh, the word theory at all. So I'm just wondering, when can we as authors kind of compromise and do not include a theoretical framework in the paper? Uh, this is my question. Thank you. Hmm. Jason, you want to go first? Um, it's, uh, thank you very much for this question. It's an interesting question. It, it, I think actually it has something to do with how you define theory, theoretical framework. Um, in a sense, hypotheses can be seen as a form of theory, and uh, probably um, a kind of a theory-based prediction uh, based on some theoretical form framework or uh, notions, uh, um, perspectives. 
But uh, if you uh, talk about uh, uh, qualitative papers, we actually look at, we actually publish lots of qualitative papers. Um, so those papers tend to have a have a, a, a named or explicit theoretical framework, um, case studies or interview based studies. They use like institutional logics or use uh, uh, institutional work and those uh, those framework. That's right. So now some of the theory they do not have a theory in the name, but maybe it's just a paper uh, uh, of like a seminal paper in this important research of disciplines. But we still regard that as uh, as a theory because they, they were presumably the first one to provide underlying reason and also evidence on certain important mechanism or reason. So we uh, so yeah, that's presumably the, the one of the reason that of your observation. But the question is uh, well taken. Thanks very much. We see, uh, see in the chat, Sally Ahmed has indicated that she's got a question. Sally, do you want to uh, unmute and ask the question? And then we've got another one from the floor here. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this presentation. Um, I have a quick question, please. As a PhD student, uh, if I would like to have a feedback on my paper before officially submit it, are there any workshops that could help me with that, uh, organized by the British Accounting Review, I mean? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jason? Um, that's one of our intentions, our plans to encourage uh, younger researchers and also help younger researchers. We, uh, like the BAFA, we have Dr. Crocum or um, Sporum. Uh, we can probably do more of that. Uh, we can incorporate this kind of uh, activities at uh, section meetings or special interest group meetings. Um, we can also, probably will plan also to run a similar uh, event uh, uh, sponsored or organized by members or uh, editorial board members and associate editors or other people who, who would like to do it um, to, so that we can, we can like, uh, um, get, uh, provide feedbacks to our own papers to the, the authors, especially the younger uh, junior uh, researchers. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Sally, so if you uh, go to the website of, of the bar, uh, we list a number of special issue events uh, uh, on the website. Um, so for some of the workshops, uh, the workshop took place first, take place first before the formal submission. And I think the, those workshops can provide you valuable opportunities to develop the paper before you sum submit to the journal for formal uh, review. To, we encourage the, like this, guest editorial teams to organize a conference before uh, formal submission to the special issue, so that the conference will provide feedback before the, the authors formally submit the paper to the journal. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, we have a conference on uh, corporate disclosure, for example, they are organizing a conference um, in November. Yeah. That's that's great. Okay, we've another question here from the floor. Okay, I have uh, one question about uh, about writing. Um, some some journals are very um, focused about uh, about writing, about uh, about the use of English. And uh, I had experience with uh, with one journal that uh, uh, in the final rounds, uh, one of them also literally had to spend about uh, thirty hours to just to proofread line by line, the comma by comma, to you know, but. You know that's that's a standard of those those journals and uh, some other journals are they are less so in terms of you know the the pre preciseness of uh, of the language. So I just want to ask because uh, it's not listed as uh, top reason for death rejection. English not uh, so. I just want to ask how uh, precise and uh, you know focused and also um, I would say you know hygienic in terms of uh, in terms of the use of uh, English in the language about the journal. We, it's probably not the top reason for best rejection or rejection uh, after review, but it's, a, it's possibly one of the reasons uh, some papers are not well developed, not well written. Uh, and so we would uh, advise you, rather than spending 30 hours reading each line yourself, maybe send the paper to a professional copy editor to, to, to polish it before uh, Submission, especially the final submission. 
I'm asking this because uh, the paper was proofreaded before submission, then proofreaded again in the new resubmission. Uh, in the final round, we would gain spend another 30 hours proofreading that ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we would, would encourage the non-native speakers, English speakers, to do that, especially if you have a, um, major changes each round, maybe it's appropriate to get, a, get this published, uh, published by a professional copy editor, especially the final submission. Uh, even maybe, I don't know, it's, uh, sometimes uh, you can see the professional copy editors, if you send the paper to them, they, they give you lots of comments or provide revisions. So sometimes they make mistakes. Uh, that's a that's a particular trouble. I think you have to yeah, you, you yourself or your co-authors uh, have to should should probably read the paper uh, again and again to avoid um, uh, further errors, mistakes. Okay. Uh, look, I know I know we started a bit late, and I know we're I know we're up against lunch, which is always distracting right at the last <laughs> minute. Um, but I think we can have one more question from the floor here, uh, and then we'll uh, call it to a close. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a question about turnaround time. Um, I think one of one of the very um, one thing very disappointing is for you to submit a paper to a journal, and it takes about a year before they get back to you. Then they tell you it's rejected. So having the chance to meet editors like you, I want to find out what are you doing to ensure that your authors actually get feedback on time so that they don't have to wait forever for that bad or sad news. Thank you. I first, uh, apologies for this bad experience. Uh, we uh, so occasionally we have cases like this. Probably, I don't know, I have a lot of experience uh, uh, the, the, the situation as you just mentioned, uh, but sometimes we got a, we got a, uh, problems uh, uh, appointing a reviewer. Uh, and sometimes we like we need to, like a, to approach more than ten people before someone agrees to review a paper. Uh, sometimes uh, it can actually quite often uh, the the reviewers they agree to review, but uh, after a long time there's no response, okay, the, the, the report, even after you uh, chase the reviewer time and time again. Um, so we have to reassign the paper to somebody else. Okay? So this, could, this, this is one of the main reasons for, for delay. Um, so we, we were trying to minimize the delay. Um, so we, we have a, a reminder system, reminder system okay, if, uh, if the uh, reviewer does not respond after uh, a, a, a certain period of time, then the reminder is sent, then another reminder is sent. And we also now, we, we ask the editorial office to check the, um, the status of the papers uh, regularly. If, if there's an overdue um, review, then we will write to the uh, reviewer and also the associate editor. Chase them up. Mm. And, and, and do you want to add anything? Uh, well, just quickly. So we we recently had a like track record system uh, in the reviewing uh, portal. So we know like uh, each uh, reviewer got a score. So we uh, try to avoid to uh, choosing those delayed reviewers. We try to uh, uh, I mean encourage AEs to choose the responsible ones and efficient ones. Mm. 